So when you're breeding snakes and have over 100 babies in the season, there's a lot of cleaning that you have to do. We separated all of our babies because we, we usually spend like an entire day cleaning all of our adults, but then when you add babies on top of it, it takes a long time. So we had all of our babies separated and we're like, this would be a good opportunity to show you how all of our babies are doing. We have four clutches that have been introduced to the channel already. Brad and Peanut's baby bull snakes, red bull snakes, the rat corns, and the first clutch of hognose snakes. And there are still four more clutches that have already hatched, but we haven't shown them to you on the channel yet, so you don't get to see them yet. I'm sorry, they're still a secret. By the way, um, this is not because I got bit by something. It's from poison ivy. I'm on week two of three. So that's why that's covered up, just because I know people are gonna ask. But let's start with the bull snakes from Brad and Peanut. So we actually don't have all 25 anymore because quite a few of them have already been shipped to their new homes. They are all eating and they all look fantastic. How many do we have left? Uh, I don't know actually. How many heads do I see? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 left. Either 11 or 12. I can't tell. Oh, and two more upstairs. Yeah. So 14-ish. So they, they have varying amounts of red and it seems like they are getting redder as they age and the more um, times they shed they seem to get some more color with them. They've actually calmed down a little bit since we put them in here but trust me they are just as feisty as they were when they were out of the eggs. Um, may maybe not. Maybe they're st finally starting to calm down. Yeah, I haven't heard a hiss yet. Yeah. There, oh, there we, we go. go. Yep. Yep. Had to do it. I saw him staring at me. Anyway, they're doing really, really well. I'm just going to take this guy out because he was, because he was hissing. Usually when we find one that's particularly salty, when we're looking at them, we take them out to try to socialize them a little bit so they're not as bad when they are sent to their new homes. But these guys are, uh, in case anyone's interested in them, I am sorry our waiting lists actually for all of these snakes are completely full. Just as a heads up, they are all gonna be claimed pretty soon here. Look at you, you're rattling your tail. That's a scary camera. You Whoa. better hiss at it. Whoa, you're so fierce. Look at him hold that strike pose. But yeah, these guys are all doing really well. It's kind of neat. There's some that oh, calm down. It's just like the egg hatching video. My goodness. Yeah. So some of them like this one have a lot more yellow. Like they have a brighter background around those spots or blotches. And some of them are a little bit darker. Some seem to have more of a busy pattern. So they're all a little bit different, but it seems like only one of them is feisty today. And that's actually not bad. All right, next to hatch and uh, be introduced on the channel would be the first group of hognose babies. These cute little guys are doing really well. Not all of them have eaten yet. These are the eaters and uh, we've split up the clutch between the eaters and the non-eaters just so that we know who is who. But of course they are not kept in these just for the sake of cleaning. We separate them based on who's eaten and who hasn't. Uh, and I want to show them to you. So, oh, we've got a cobra. Look out, guys. We've got a cobra. Oh, oh man. Cheeks. Yeah, look at oh. that. Oh, what a scary cobra. So these are all the ones that have eaten actually several times already. We're just waiting for them to eat one more meal before they get shipped to their new homes. This is Walt from the hatching video, if you remember him. Hi, buddy. And he's doing well. We've got some nice condomorphs here. Here, I'll show you the difference in case, for those of you who don't know the difference, there's a morph out there called the anacondomorph that we call conda for short. Come on, let go of your friend. And the one on the left is an example of the condomorph because see that reduced pattern? There's very few spots compared to the one on the right. The hognose on the right is considered a normal mutation. So this is what they look like in the wild. The condas also have usually an all black belly. This one does not have an all black belly. Do you, Walt? How's your belly? Ah, oh, there we go. This is a better example of a conda. They have a nice all black belly and they have these white walls along each side of the belly. That's another trait of the condomorph. That's totally a boy. Oh yeah. Look at that long tail. Oh man. And then in the non-eater bin, we have of course my favorite one, hasn't wanted to eat yet. This is the, the cheetah looking hog nose. Look at those spots. I swear it looks like a cheetah down its back. I love the fading spots on the sides. Almost like a twin spot look, even though it's not a twin spot. This one is a girl. See this 
short stubby tail. So this one I think we're gonna hold back at least for the time being. I just hope she starts eating for us, but we have some tricks up our sleeve to get them eating. And there's some other really nice condas in here too. The prettiest normal in here I think is this guy. He's got a crazy busy pattern, just a bunch of little spots all the way down his body. So what I'm trying with these guys is I'm trying to get them to eat unscented pinkies first off, because if they can eat that right off the bat that would be fantastic. And then, oh look at him, he's peeking over the edge. That thing is so cute. And if the unscented pinkies don't work, then I actually have toads that I will rub a pinky on to kind of toad scent them and trick these guys into eating pinkies. That usually does the trick, but if that doesn't even work, then usually the remaining picky eaters will eat live pinkies. So there's a couple different phases on getting baby hognoses to eat. We have not contacted the waiting list on these guys quite yet. We're about to, but we want to make sure that they have eaten at least three unscented meals before they get shipped to their new home. So if you're on the waiting list and I haven't reached out to you, don't worry, you haven't missed out. I'm just waiting until these guys are ready to go. All right, next on the channel to hatch was our first clutch of rat corns. These guys, we found out their father was the scaleless rat snake. And of course we knew the mother was a het scaleless rat corn. And let's see, we have the eaters in this bin. We put black capes with all the non-eaters to remember. There's a bunch in here. A bunch of rat corns. <gasps> there they are! These are all the ones that have eaten, and actually they've eaten enough so that they are available um, to our waiting list. So if you're on the waiting list, I will be reaching out to you shortly, and once I reach your name, you can expect an email from me, because they will be sent out to their new homes pretty soon. We have varying qualities of scaleless rats, like, check out this one. He does have maybe like three or four rows of scales down his back, other than that, he's a gorgeous scaleless rat corn. Such a derpy little face. Whereas this one only has like two rows. Ah, man, it looks like a few less scales. It looks like three rows down its back. So that would be considered a slightly higher quality scaleless rat corn. When you're breeding for scaleless, you really want the fewest amount of scales possible down the back. Oh man, they're getting very energetic. Go in your cave. Go in your cave. Really, dude? Ugh. Go in the cave. No, no. Oh, escapey. All right. Okay. We got them in the cave. We had they're stopped the camera. Back in there. But they're all in here <laughs> contained and not wanting to come back out, which is good. This one, which is what I was trying to say earlier before they all tried to take off, this one is the best scaleless rat corn in this group, at least of the eaters, I think, because he only has one single row of scales down his back. And he's a lovely orange color, too. Really, really pretty colors. So anyway, those are the eaters. And the non-eaters include the cleft lip baby, which everybody seems to love. Let's see if we can find him. He's doing really well. Of course, the cleft lip will be something he has for life. And you guys are right, by the way. It's totally a steak design that he has on his head. <laughs> totally a steak. A T-bone, yeah. He also has the slightly curved nose, but it doesn't seem to be hindering him in any way. Although he doesn't want to eat. Yeah, he doesn't want to eat, but neither do these guys either. I'm mm. sure he'll eat with time. Here's the smiley face, baby. You're just as social as you were out of the egg. You're right up front, aren't you? Checking everyone out. Now the cleft lip baby we um, are going to be adopting out. We did get a ton of emails from interested people who'd be willing to adopt him and thank you guys so much for offering him a home. Uh, we kept like five or six of those emails to reach out to once he is ready, but we're not gonna reach out quite yet to our top picks because um, we wanna make sure that he's gonna make it and that he's gonna eat first. So we're gonna wait until we're positive he's gonna be okay and then we'll start reaching out to the people who are interested in adopting him you know before you sell your kid you want to make sure they eat and poop you want to make sure they're gonna live before yeah. you sell your kid yeah yeah always a smart thing to do <laughs> the other ones in this clutch that haven't eaten yet are these guys including a very very nice quality um high uh scaleless rat corn so i'm hoping that he starts eating soon he's like extra wrinkly now with snakes usually wrinkles is a sign of dehydration but for scaleless snakes it's just part of the way they look, so it's completely normal. These guys, uh, I'm sure will start eating with time and then they will also be shipped to their new homes. Now, if anyone's interested in what these babies will look like after a year, this is the scaleless baby we held back from last year. I unfortunately cannot share with you his name because it is not kid friendly. I'm sure you can guess what it is though. Uh, but this guy is looking great. We kept him because he was hatched white and we could see his heart beat through his body and we wanted to see how that would develop. Well, as you can see, he turned orange 
Ed actually wasn't sure who he was, were you? Not really. Because <laughs> he's totally changed colors. I mean, no, I help all the time with feeding your snakes and stuff <laughs> like that, so I know all of them by heart. Caught you. I do all the work. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, this guy is doing really well. He's a fantastic eater, although we're not going to, like, he could be bigger if we power fed him, but we, of course, are not huge fans of power feeding. We just kind of let them naturally grow. He it was, I mean, a really nice scalist, too. He has a few scales down his back, but not a whole lot, and he feels like velvet, like, just, just like velvet, and when they shed... It looks like when you put Elmer's glue on your hand and then it dries and you peel it up, their shed looks just like that. Unless they have a scale there, then you can see like a little sesame seed scale in that part of the shed. Not that I always put glue on my hands and peel it off because it's satisfying. I don't do that. Okay, we're gonna put screw this one away and we're gonna take a look at the last clutch that hatched. Last clutch that you've seen on the channel and I want to update you on would be the Red Bulls. These guys are not a drink. They are a snake. They are huge babies. Like, their eggs were big, and these babies are big. They're the youngest bull snakes we have, but they're bigger than all of the others. And they have eaten their first meal. Look at how red they are, especially. There's one in here that's particularly red. There it is. This one right here. Super red, look at that. This one is a female, so since we don't have the mom anymore, since we, uh, she had some issues laying her eggs, so we gave her to a friend to keep as a pet only, we needed to replace her, so I think we're gonna hold this one back to uh, replace her when, she, when she's ready to breed. Hi, cutie. Oh, aren't, aren't you comfy and cozy on that towel? She's like, I blend in, it's yeah. red. I'm red like this thing. I'm camouflaging. Hopefully the, the camera might not do it justice, Yeah, though. the camera doesn't. Really? No, you can't oh. even see, like, the salmon on the side of her oh, head. Oh, that's a bummer. This one's super red, guys. Oh. Just incredible. As she gets older, we'll be able to show off more and more red. Yeah, that's true. Are you trying to figure out what's under there? There's more snakes under there. <laughs> you doing wiggle, the head wiggle, wiggle. wiggle? So there's not really much else to explain with these guys since you just saw them hatch, but, yeah, the three babies are doing really well and i think we are actually going to now try to feed a mouse to a baby from each clutch here for you to see so this is a butt flat baby aka the one with the cleft lip and the slightly wonky head but so cute anyway come here he has not eaten yet so it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't eat hey look doesn't this look tasty no oh, it's, it's scary, scary. Oh, no. Doesn't want to eat it from the tongues. So, backup plan is we're going to set Pinky on the edge of a round container that is not see-through. And then we're going to just set him in it, cover it up, and we're going to check back later and see if he eats it. Now, while we're waiting, let's feed a bull snake. Let's do a bull snake. Let's try to feed this one since he came out of the bin on his own. Hey, sweetie. Here. I'm gonna eat a fuzzy. Oh. <laughs> nice. This is why bull snakes are amazing. You can set them on a table when they've just been in a pile with all of their siblings for cleaning, and they'll eat from the tongs. This is this is what third meal probably. Something like that. Yeah, and he doesn't care. He'll just eat in front yeah. of everything. Tasty foods. <laughs> So we're going to put these guys back upstairs and put them back in their individual bins where we will feed the rest of them because today is really just a cleaning day and a feeding day and we decided to film while we had them separated. Uh, but we're going to put them all back and uh, let's feed another snake. Next we're going to try to feed one of the hog noses that has already eaten because I'm sure the other ones won't eat on camera because they're hog noses. But there's one in here that'll take, one of the condas will take pinkies directly from tweezers. Is it you? I don't think it's you. Is it you? I think it's this one. Excuse me. Do you want a pinky? Yep, I think it's this one. Food. Here you go. Doesn't that smell good? Huh. <laughs> that was so cute. Oh, what a good little conda. There you go. It's all yours. That one is going to be a fantastic eater for whoever yeah. gets it. Man.
That he'll was be really cute. Excellent hog nose for someone. Yeah, he'll probably get shipped out first because yeah. he's more than ready. Yeah, let me get that thing off your face. Oh, you <laughs> got it. Cool. That means we have just one clutch left to try to feed. That would be the Red Bulls. Let's feed this beautiful red one. Because I'm not playing favorites because this one's gorgeous. And you're going to keep it. And I'm going to keep it. Hey, girl. You going to be a good eater for us? Say, I'm pretty. I don't have to eat. Yeah, you'll love me anyway. Which is true. I don't think she wants to eat. No, she doesn't look like it, does she? No. No. Okay. Let's try feeding this red bull snake. Hey, cutie. Well, this is the one with the busy pattern. Do you want to eat? Smells good. No, she doesn't want to eat. We'll try feeding this one. Looks tasty. You know you want it. Look at that tasty fuzzy. Okay, reds don't want to eat. <laughs> that's okay. Although the red bulls didn't want to eat, that's okay. We'll just feed this fuzzy to probably one of bread or peanuts babies. Bread and peanuts babies. And uh, let's check out butt flat baby. See if he ate. Did you eat? Nope, he didn't eat either. That's okay. With time, I'm sure he will. We'll just probably let him sit in here a little bit longer even after we film. So those are all the babies that you've seen hatch anyway so far on the channel. Just wanted to give you an update on how they're all doing, which is wonderfully. They're doing really well. Eventually they'll all eat. A lot of them have. And actually quite a few of the bull snakes have already gone to their new homes. So thank you everybody for watching today's little update baby video. And thank you of course to our Patreon supporters for backing this channel. We very much appreciate your support and we'll see you all next time. Got another choo-choo train. <laughs> oh, he's an inchworm today. Oh, maybe that's Walt. That one's totally Walt. I see that three one? Mickey Mouse heads. Yeah. <laughs> There's more snakes under there. <laughs> you doing wiggle, the head wiggle, wiggle? wiggle? Do we want to show off anything over here? Oh, they haven't seen them hatching yet. Mm, we could show off maybe something that's coming up on Friday. Mm, oh, okay, like a sneak peek? Yeah. Okay, a I'll quick, sh quick sneak peek. Quick, okay, quick sneak, quick sneak peek. A quick sneak peek. I will show you one snake from the clutch that will be in Friday's hatching video. How about this one? Here is a baby from that clutch. This is one of the albino bull snakes that we hatched this season. So you'll see this hatching video come out really soon. It'll be our next video. But something really weird happened with this clutch and we still don't know what exactly is going on.